everyone, it's Nell with Little Yellow House Crafts. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new, welcome. If you've been around for a long time, welcome back. Uh, it's been two weeks since I posted a video, so I'm here for an update. I've got lots of stuff to show you today. Um, just before we get started, I want you to see this jewelry that I'm wearing. So this is really special. <laughs> this set of earrings and necklace belonged to my grandmother. She passed away um, just over a year ago and when I was out um, at my parents house in January my um, my dad gave me this jewelry set from her um, belongings. He I guess had been offered to a few other granddaughters and no one wanted it and I saw it and I just fell in love. They're these little um, I think they're melamine um, flowers, just little plastic flowers. And there's some like little diamantes, like fake diamonds in there as well. And then the earrings. My grandmother did not have pierced ears. She wore clip-ons her entire life. And so I can't wear these for more than about an hour before my ears start to kill me. But I've thought about getting some of those um, earring converters. Um, I don't know, actually I don't know if they make converters to go from clip-ons to pierced ears. Regardless, I've thought about getting some um, earring posts and maybe like super gluing them onto the back so that I can wear these more comfortably. But I wore them to church this morning and I just really, they're just really special. I think they're, it's an incredibly beautiful necklace and earring set and I just think it's so lovely and it reminds me of my grandma. So. Yeah, oh, and the hair today. So I have a pro tip here. If you wake up late and don't have time to wash and style your hair before having to look like presentable and nice, then put it in a bun and go for ballerina chic. <laughs> That's what I did today. It's in a bun, can you see? I have a bun back here because I ran out of time and so we are embracing the ballerina look. If you wear glasses, you could even swing it as like librarian chic. <laughs> Make it look on purpose and no one will think anything different. Anyway, so I am gonna take these off so that they don't hurt my ears. Ooh, you see how red they get? I can wear them for about an hour and then my ears start to hurt and I have to take them off. But. They're just really special. It's such a beautiful little set. I'm going to guess this was maybe 80s? No, I don't know. Was this the style in the 80s? I don't know. Does anyone know? 80s, maybe 70s, maybe 60s? I don't know. There is a little name. Cara or Coro? C-O-R-O -O or C-A-R-A? -A. I think it's O's. Coro. C-O-R-O. -O. Does anyone know anything about Coro jewelry and how old this set might be? Anyway, so that's what I wore to church today. It's really special. Okay. Nothing really life updates. Same old, same old. We're still chugging away at homeschool. Boys are doing great. Husband's doing fine. He got made chief resident on Friday. <laughs> So that's kind of fun. Um, yeah, I don't have anything else. So let's go into stitching. I have four finishes to show you. Some of them are smaller, some of them are bigger, but I have four finishes that I've gotten done in the last uh, two weeks. And because I've been stitching, like cross stitching so much, I don't have any more felt ornaments to show. I've just been really riding a wave of cross stitch obsession and I'm gonna ride that wave until it starts to taper off and then I'll go do some more felt. Does anybody else do that? Do you go through phases where you're like super into one of your crafts and then it kind of fades and you do a different craft for a while and then you go back, I don't know. Um, the first one I have is my Country Cottage Needleworks Seasonal Celebrations Winter. I can't remember, did I show this to you guys last time? Did I have this started? I feel like I had this started last time, but maybe that's a lie. I can't remember anything. So that is Seasonal Celebrations Winter. I've already done two of these. I've done the summer one and I've done the autumn one. And so I wanted to do the winter one and it's finished. Ta-da! 
So I did change up the colors ever so slightly. I went darker on the brown, um, on some of the brown, kept some of the lighter brown, but that is seasonal celebrations winter and I think it turned out really cute I stitched this on 32 count um, blue ice Belfast linen <gasps> Sorry. Oh, yawn has been waiting to make its appearance for like five minutes um blue ice Belfast linen this is not a modeled linen it's not a like faux hand dyed by Zweigert this is just a straight baby blue and I used a, a fat 16th, I think they call these, the 9 by 13 cuts that 1, 2, 3 stitch sells. Those 9 by 13 cuts are perfect for these if you do um, 32 count. You could probably get, get away with 28 count too. It would be a little bigger and a little wider, but I think there's enough border that you could probably get away with it on 28 count too. So anyway, that was Seasonal Celebrations Winter. And because I always show you what threads I chose, because I always choose my own threads, I might have shown these to you last time, but again, I don't remember. So we'll go through them quickly. The green I used is Desert Mesquite by Classic Colorworks. My two aquas, teals, I have Really Tealy by Classic Colorworks and Tempting Teal by Victorian Motto. And those two together just look really nice. Then we have It's Berry Blue by Victorian Motto as my blue. Cocoa Bean is my light brown. Bittersweet is my dark brown. And Slate Roof as my gray, all of those from Victorian Motto. And so those are the colors I chose. And I really liked how it turned out. Oh, and I used DMC Blanc, but that's already been taken off the ring and used for another project because I use my white for just about everything. Let's take a moment really quickly and address something that came up in my Facebook group um, in the last week or so. And and I just want to address it because I know not everybody who watches my videos is part of my Facebook group. There was a, um, a post where someone was asking for advice, clarification, you know, expressing concerns about Victorian motto um, thread clubs because they are behind, they've been behind for a while now, and they people haven't been receiving their orders or haven't even received their invoices for the clubs. And there was just, there were, there were a lot of comments expressing frustration, concern, you know, disappointment. And I just wanna address it because even though I am not like personally involved with a Victorian Motto Sampler Shop at all, I'm not sponsored by them, all the things I show you, I buy myself. She doesn't send me free stuff to show you, I promise. Um, even though I'm not involved with her business, I do feel, ooh, the sun just came out. Sorry, it might get a little glary. Um, I do feel a measure of responsibility to you guys because I have promoted her products and I think a lot of you might have joined her clubs because of what I've shared. And, you know, I don't, I don't want to lead anyone um, astray. I don't want to give anyone a false impression. I will say this, the, this last year has been hard for a lot of businesses, but I feel like Victorian Motto has been particularly, um, I'm trying to sit, think of how to say this without sounding like I'm criticizing. I, I think they, the way that they have approached the pandemic is perhaps not the best way they could have handled um, this sort of situation with this huge influx of customers, right? Oh my gosh, the sun is like blinding me. My blinds are closed and I can barely look at the camera. There we go. Sun's going behind clouds again. Um, they had a huge influx of customers right before the pandemic hit because of myself and other floss tubers and other like stitchers who've shared their products um, and rightly so because they're wonderful. And then, you know, huge influx of customers, then the pandemic hits, you know, supply shortage, they can't get threads in, Nancy's got some health problems, she was laid up for a while. I think that they're just, it was like the perfect storm for their business. And I'm not trying to make excuses because I think there are things they could have done to maybe um, make the, the issues more manageable in the moment. But that being said, it's not my business. It's not my business and however they choose to run it is how they choose to run it. And so the only advice that I can give is you need to decide for yourself what you're willing to tolerate. Um, 
in my experience, whenever there's been a problem with an order or something's misplaced or something like that, which hasn't been very often, as soon as I contact Nancy, I get an email back from her in like 15 minutes. I'm not kidding. Saying, thank you for letting me know. No problem. We'll take care of it and get that right in the mail. And she always makes it right. Now, that is my experience, and I realize that my experience may be different than yours. You may have had poor customer service. Maybe you sent an email and it didn't get responded to as quickly as you were hoping, or fill in the blank. I can only share my experience, and my experience with this, with this company, with Victorian Motto, has always been positive, overwhelmingly positive. So I'm gonna continue to order and share the products that I use. If that if you've had a bad experience or if you're not willing to wait you know a couple extra months for an order because of supply issues or whatever that's fine there's nothing wrong with that you are the consumer and you get to decide for yourself how much you will tolerate i've been ordering from nancy for years now and she's always made it right i've always been really pleased with the service and the products i receive so as a consumer, I'm making the choice to accept delays or whatever. I might have to stay on top of my orders and send her an email if I haven't seen something and it's been a few months. Like, I'm willing to do that. If you're not, it's okay. <laughs> there are so many great options out there for us as stitchers. So I just wanted to say this, not to be negative or a downer because I believe that you have a right to feel frustrated and disappointed if that has been your experience. I just don't want that to become like the focus of my Facebook group, if that makes sense. I'm not affiliated with Victorian Motto. I love the products, but if that's not your thing and you are not okay with it, then just cancel your subscription and move along. Um, if someone asks, you can share your experience because I believe in being honest, but I did turn off the commenting because we were up to like 30 comments and they were all you know, various people chiming in and it just, it didn't feel like it was helpful anymore. It was just turning into like a rant space. So I turned off comments. I hope that nobody felt like I was shutting them down or you're not allowed to say bad things about Victorian Motto on my group. That is not the case. I just wanted to keep, I want to keep my group a happy and positive place. And so I just wanted to throw this disclaimer out there. I love Victorian Motto. I will continue to order from them. We just got an email from Nancy a couple of days ago saying they just, they've just they just got like 40 cones of thread delivered to them and there, there's more coming. So the, the light at the end of the tunnel is there. We just gotta hang on until we get there. And you know, you gotta do what's best for you as a consumer. Okay, that was way too long and I'm sorry that this video took a more serious turn, but I just felt like it needed to be addressed because I I kind of advertise for Victorian Motto all the time on my channel and I don't want anyone to feel misled by me. Okay, we're done. Can we move on now? Great. So that was my first finish was Seasonal Celebrations Winter by Country Cutters Needleworks. Then I had another new start and finish, and this is what I showed you guys last time that I thought I wanted to start, and that is Winter Whirly Gig by Heart and Hand. Love these. I only have one left of these to finish the series of four. I already have the thing I wanna finish them in, and then I just need to do some finishing, which intimidates me. I've never tried to finish something round before, but I know um, Cindy, Cindy's Cross Stitch, I know Cindy, has a tutorial on finishing like round and egg shaped things and so I might go watch that and I think so does um Kathy Haberman from Hands On Design I think she taught how to make like a domed um cross stitch like pin cushion top by doing layers of batting or felt and varying like slowly decreasing sized circles anyway if you don't know what i'm talking about i might try to look up those videos and i'll link them down below so there are tutorials out there to help with finishing round things but i feel intimidated by it <laughs> anyway i stitched this on the same piece of fabric that i've stitched the other two that i've done and here it is it's so cute i love the cardinal Cardinals are my favorite. We see them all the time here in the Midwest, which is so fun. I will say that for the Midwest. The Midwest has the most beautiful birds of anywhere I've lived. So there's the summer whirly gig. There's the autumn whirly gig. 
there is the winter whirly gig and I have one spot left to do the spring whirly gig. I kind of have a lot of extra fabric on this, but it is what it is. This is 32 count vintage country mocha by Zweigart. So it's the fake hand dyed on the back. It's solid on the front. There's like that modeling printed onto the fabric. So that is winter whirly gig by heart and hand. And I once again chose my own threads. So once again, I'm going to show you what I used. Okay. My white off white, I used classic Colorworks antique lace, light brown classic Colorworks wagon wheel. My black is Week Dye, Weeks Dye Works Onyx. My orange, Gray's Lily, my Victorian motto. My pink, Weeks Dye Works Madison Rose. Light gray, Shaded Seaside, Victorian motto. My dark kind of brown gray, Hickory Sticks, Classic Color Works. My green, Garden Glory, Victorian motto, and my red is Red Schoolhouse by Victorian motto, which is just the prettiest like vintage true red. It's still a true red, but it looks sort of, not prim, but vintage red schoolhouse. So those are the colors I used for Winter Worthy Gig. Next, third finish. Oh, this one was fun. This stitched up pretty quickly, I must say. Although there were some huge blocks of color that were challenging to not get bored of. Um, this is, I showed this in my last video that I thought I wanted to start it. And that was Easter Peep Parade by Brenda Gervais. Um, I'm not sure if this is, yeah. With Thy Needle and Thread, Brenda Gervais, Country Stitches. She has like three different names that her that patterns are known by. Brenda Gervais, Country Stitches, and With Thy Needle and Thread, all designed by the same, by the same woman, Brenda. And this is Easter Peep Parade. I asked in my last video if you guys thought I should do the brown or if I should do like a pastel. And it was honestly pretty evenly split. About half of you thought I should stick with the chocolate kind of color. Half of you thought I should go with more of like a springy, Eastery, pastel color. And what made the decision for me is that I had this piece of brown linen sitting in my stash that I had bought for the purpose of doing this project and I couldn't imagine using it for anything else. And I was like, well, that would be such a waste. I bought it for this project. I should use it. So I use the brown. My brown, however, is slightly lighter than the brown linen in this picture. The linen that I used, uh, where's the tag here it is this was before 123 stitch went to the stickers so I have an actual tag here this is 36 count bark brown Edinburgh linen by Zweigart in a 9 by 13 cut so I went with a 36 count bark brown which is a standard color that Zweigart dyes at least it used to be it might be discontinued I don't know um, but that is what I've had this in my stash for a while and so I bought it for this project and I decided to use it. I did choose all my own colors to lighten it up just a little bit, brighten it up, but here's how it turned out. And I love it. <laughs> so I think because my brown is slightly lighter, more of a milk chocolate, if you will, I think it looks great. And I changed the color of the rabbit and I changed the color of the eggshell and some of the, basically all the colors, I chose my own colors. And it made it, I don't know, I just think it looks really good. And I think this would be so cute as a little pillow with like some white and yellow lace around the edge or something really cute like that. Because it's just, it's just the sweetest. So this is how it turned out. Let me get it closer so you can see. Here's the bunny and the egg. And it's just great. So this was Easter Peep Parade by Brenda Gervais on the bark brown. Sorry, I can't figure out how to hold it on the bark brown. And I think it turned out great. Um, show you the colors I chose because I did brighten up the colors. Brenda Gervais, when she designs, she typically goes for more of a prim, oops, 
more of a prim color scheme, which is totally in keeping with her style and which is beautiful. I don't think there's anything wrong with the color she chose. I'm just not a prim stitcher. I like brighter, more vibrant colors. If you've been watching my videos for any length of time, then you know that. So I chose, <laughs> doesn't it look like candy or sorbet or something? I chose a brighter, more pastel, not pastels, more vibrant spring palette to stitch my um, colors to stitch my piece. I can't speak English today. So the colors I used, most of these are Victorian model, but there are a few others. Um, old Rose Pink is my dark pink, and then my lighter pink was Parade, and those look so good together. So those are the flowers. Orange Marigold was my orange, a nice like soft, it's looking kind of fluorescent in the lighting here. It's like a soft orange, there you go. It's not like a pumpkin orange, it's more of a, a marigold, more of a springtime orange. Sunflower yellow, which again is looking neon. It's not, it's a soft buttery, or not buttery, soft lemony yellow. Um, sunflower yellow. My green is stuffed celery, nice light green. My eggshell aqua color is called favorite aqua. Then the color of, what was this? Oh, the color of the wagons, the wagon wheels and axles is Pebble Beach by Classic Colorworks. Sorry, you can't see that at all. Pebble Beach, Classic Colorworks. The color of the bunny I changed to more of a warm brown, which is Desert Camel. Then we had Molasses as the dark, dark brown for their eyes. Pebble, which is a gray that I used somewhere else by Weeks Dye Works. And then my white, I decided to go with 3865. If you aren't aware, 3865 is a DMC white that's kind of more of a prim white. It's, it's off-white. Okay, my shirt is ivory, off-white, and it's a pretty close match. So you can see my shirt is not like a bright, bright white. It's sort of an off, creamy, vintage white, and that's what 3865 is. DMC has three colors of white. They have Blanc, which is their regular white. They have B5200, which is their like blue white, like super bright white. And then they have 3865, which is kind of their soft white. It's not as dark as Ecru, but it's not as bright as Blanc. So I just thought that looked nicer um, with these colors than a bright white would have. And I think it looks great. Once again, there it is. So cute, so pretty. I really love it. I think it turned out great and I like that I did it on the brown. Um, I really was having doubts, but I just, I was like, nope, I gotta use what I bought. And then I ended up being happy with it. So that was finish number three. Last finish, this was not, I didn't think that this would be a finish, but it ended up being a finish. Do you guys remember how last Stitch Mania I started Star Spangled Swine Farm, and then later in the year I finished the big one, and then I had barely started the topper, and I pulled this out, and I decided to put some more work in on the topper, and then lo and behold, I finished it. <laughs> So the only thing I haven't stitched of this pattern is the small pillow. I don't have any plans to stitch that anytime soon, but I'm not getting rid of the pattern because who knows, maybe someday. And here is the topper. Star Spangled Swine Farm. Look at how cute it is. I love Priscilla's designs. <laughs> So this was designed by Priscilla, charted by Kathy Haberman at Hands On Design before Priscilla and Chelsea kind of started their own um, chart company with the housewives. So this was, this is, the chart is available through um, Hands On Design and it's part of the Farmhouse Chalk series. But Priscilla drew the chalkboard that Kathy then charted into this design. And it's so cute. <laughs> Those pigs and the chickens laying nests on or creating laying eggs in nests on the bunting is just so Priscilla isn't it so kind of country homestead style like I just love it farmhouse chic I love it it's so cute and just for fun here's the the main piece that I finished oh probably six months ago now 
so cute. So I already have the thing that I want to finish these on too. I found this great like hanging chalkboard thingy wall hanging that I found on clearance at Michael's a bajillion years ago. And it's the perfect size for this series. It has a space near the top for like the, the heading. What do you call this piece? The topper part and then a big space underneath for the main part. So first one of these is done. I do have all four in the farmhouse chalk series and you're going to see one of them coming up soon. So that was my fourth finish was the topper for that. Those were all my finishes. Pretty good. Let's go on to whips. I have two whips that I've been working on. The first one is this probably looks familiar to you guys. This is Plum Street Samplers Liberty's Welcome. And uh, let's see. Well, regardless, Plum Street Samplers Liberty's Welcome. That's what it looks like. You have to turn it sideways. I have been working on this on and off for like two years. I am all the way to here. This is all I had left. I was working, I had finished the bottom border, I had barely started going up on the top border and I was working on filling in all of this grass because there is so much green grass in this pod. This is 40 count, tiny cross stitches and so much solid green stitching. But I pulled it out and I got a lot done, I must say. I'm pretty proud of myself. So, all of this bottom border was finished, but I went ahead and finished all of the border. So this, the side border is done all the way up to here. Um, so I got all of that in and look at how much grass I filled in. I only have like four more rows of grass and that tiny little space is four rows. That's how small these stitches are. 40 count, lovely. And then, can you guys see over here? I started the over one. <laughs> This is one over one on 40 count and I'm rapidly coming to the conclusion that I'm turning 35 this year and it's time for me to get some readers. <laughs> I need magnification. My eyes are getting old. Um, I need really good daylight and a knot light and some magnification because stitching one over one on 40 count is no joke. But that is that T is one over one on 40 count. I'm not doing full crosses because there's not room for full crosses. I am doing um, half stitch, tent stitch. And the thread that I'm using is the NPI silks, which are slightly thicker than DMC. I've been stitching one over one, or not one over one, one over two on this whole project. And going to one over one, it's tight. It's very dense. So yeah, there's no way I could do a full cross. So that's what I've done. I've only been working on this for a couple of days, but I've gotten a lot of work done and like the end is in sight. I've decided I really want to get this done by this summer because provided they don't cancel it again, this is going to be my last year to enter the Missouri State Fair. We will be moving before, oh, sorry, I shook the camera. We will be moving before the next state fair after this year's state fair. So after 2021, we're moving in like late spring, early summer of 2022. And the fair isn't until August. So I will be gone and this will be my last chance to enter anything. And I'd really like to enter this beautiful piece. I've been working on it for so long. I wanna get it finished and framed and entered into the fair. So I'm feeling motivated to work on it. Last thing that I start, or uh, yes, I started it and then I've been working on is Carrots and Cottondale Farm. So this is the spring edition of the Farmhouse Chalk series that I just finished the Star Spangled Swine Farm. And I'm starting with the big one. And I started up in this top left corner and you'll see what I have done. I only started this, oh, maybe two days ago. So I haven't gotten very far. But there it is, tulips and carrots and lots of white swirlies, <laughs> mostly. So this is the top left corner. Um, so it'll continue down this way and continue across that way. And yeah, super cute. I am stitching this in the recommended DMC. This is stitched in Fancy Floss, in Classic Color Works and a few Weeks Dye Works and a few Gentle Arts. 
I didn't want to do the fancy floss just like I did with Star Spangled Swine Farm. So I have all of the DMC. Each of those um, fancy floss colors that are listed on the chart also have a DMC option in parentheses next to them. And I used them for the most part. The one exception is the orange. I didn't like the orange that was recommended. It was too like Halloween pumpkin orange. I wanted a softer orange. So I went with 722 instead. And I'm much happier with that for the carrots. Um, I just, it felt weird to have all of these like nice soft springy colors and then to throw like a really vibrant pumpkin orange, it just felt wrong to me. But I also know that dye lots differ, so you know, it could have been that their dye lot was just a different color than mine. So that is the DMC I'm using for Carrots and Cottontail Farms. Still loving it, stitching that on 32 count charcoal Belfast, which is what I use for all of my chalkboard pieces because it's easier to see than black, but it's still nice and dark. So charcoal is the best in my opinion. That is all my stitching. That was a lot. Um, yes, I don't really have any haul. I haven't really bought any stitchy stuff in the last few weeks. I know I have some threads coming from Nancy that I've gotten a shipping notification for, so they should be here relatively soon. I also got the email Oh, about a week ago that Color and Cotton had opened up some spots in their thread clubs and I've been on the waiting list for Color and Cotton for a while. I've wanted to try her thread. She's pretty local to me just in St. Louis and I know a lot of people really love Color and Cotton and I've never ordered from Color and Cotton before and so I went ahead and joined the thread club while it was open. I think the spots filled up pretty quickly because they're closed again but if you want to get on the waiting list go to her website Color and Cotton. Color is spelled the British way with a U in it just so you know. Um, go to her website and there's a place where you can sign up to be put on like the waiting list or the not the waiting list the email list so that when spots are open you'll receive an email letting you know so you can sign up. So that I did purchase, but I don't have it to show you yet. So hopefully by my next video, I will have some color and cotton threads to show you as well as my Victorian motto. I did buy, my only haul is I bought some more DMC. I needed more Blanc because I use it in place of um, Gentle Arts chalk for all of my chalkboard pieces. So I've been going through Blanc like crazy. So I think I bought five of them, but one's already been taken for another project. So, oh no, there are five there. Okay, so I bought five of them. And then I bought some more 310 because I needed a little bit more black. And then these were colors that I needed for Carrots and Cottontail Farm and I didn't have any more in my stash. And so I bought two of each. So one of them is already on the rings for Carrots and Cottontail and these are going into my stash. So that was all that I bought, really. Nothing much to show you. But I do have some plans and I need your guys' advice again. I need some help deciding what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna keep working on my current whips, but eventually I'm gonna get tired of them and need something else to stitch on. So I grabbed a couple of whips out of my bin. Um, things that I haven't worked on in a while that I'm kind of feeling maybe the call to work on a little bit. Um, one of which is the Little House Needleworks Early Americans series. Do you guys remember that I was doing these? I got the first four done. So I'm on number five, which is the Freedom Block, which is my favorite. And I think I thought about skipping it and then saving it for the end. Um, I am using Vanna's, Vanna Pfeiffer's, um, the Twisted Stitcher. I'm using her free border that she charted for her piece that's listed on her website. And it's available for anyone to use because I'm stitching them all in one. And so I am using her free border. Um, chart for with the bunting and the little stars down the side. I think they're so cute. So that's what I have done. I'm stitching this. I think this is ale. I think this is picture this plus ale fat quarter. Um, and I haven't worked on it in a long time and I'm kind of feeling like I want to work on it again. So let's see. Oh, and these are the threads. I chose my own thread colors because I always do. There's a lot of Victorian mottos in there. They've, they're all bunched, like crumpled because they've been in 
little pouch for a long time but those are my colors for early Americans I really would like to get back to that so I pulled that out in case it strikes my fancy I do kind of want to put it on a roll frame which makes me think maybe I should wait until I finish Liberty's Welcome but I kind of don't want to wait I have enough scroll frames that I feel like I could do it I feel like I could have two on roll of frames at the same time but anyway that's Early Americans by Little House Needleworks and the other one that I pulled out that I don't know why I was feeling in the mood to stitch on these because it's nowhere near Halloween time and that was my Scary Apothecary series by Hands On Design. I love these. I've stitched three of them. They are so much fun. I still have six more to go. Um, and I'm stitching these, I don't know if you guys remember, I'm stitching these on um, really fun fabrics. I picked like light pastel Halloween colors. So I have like a lime green color that I'm stitching on. I have a light purple cackle lozenges and a light orange. So all together, let me see if I can find a way to show you. They look so good together. They look so fun, Halloween-y, and I can't wait to have them all finished, all nine of them, and make some sort of like Halloween bunting to hang on my wall. But I thought about pulling those out and maybe stitching some more of those. And yeah, so that's a possibility. I don't know why those were calling to me, but... Maybe it's the, I think it's the colors. The colors are super vibrant and bright and light and fun in this. And I think I was feeling like I wanted some color in my life. So I pulled those out and then I pulled a couple things that could be new starts. We are coming up on Easter. And remember last year I had a failed attempt to stitch <laughs> the Easter house trio. And I have finished the Patriotic House Trio. I need to start another Waxy Moon Designs House Trio because I love them and I have all of them and I wanna get them all stitched. But I tried stitching this one last year in DMC and I hated the colors. It just, it was not working. And so I did the first one. I think I did the bunnies. I wanna say it was the bunnies. Yep, pretty sure it was the bunnies. And I decided, nope, I'm done. And I didn't throw it away, but I stopped stitching and I wasn't gonna keep going. And I kind of am feeling like I wanna start it again. Um, it's almost Easter. Uh, we're in the middle of Lent. I'm not Catholic or Episcopalian. I know there are a few other Christian denominations that celebrate Lent, but I always celebrate Lent anyway because I went to Catholic school for a few years and I think it's a great thing to do to like every year sacrifice something for a little while before Easter. So I'm observing Lent and getting my thoughts thinking about Easter. And so I kind of want to start this. I kind of want to try again, choosing my own fancy floss colors, using my Victorian motto and maybe some classic color works. I don't know, or not classic color works, color and cotton. <laughs> That's what I was trying to say. And I kind of want to try it again, but if I do, I need to figure out what kind of fabric I want to stitch it on. Now, this is stitched on, looks like a white. Um, and I do have some vintage smoky white, which I could use, or just regular white linen. I could go with like a cream. I have this piece of Belfast 32 count linen in cream, which might be pretty, um, especially if I choose the right colors to stitch it in. I think cream could be nice. Or I could do something a little bit more adventurous and I'm just having difficulty deciding. I think I stitched Patriotic House Trio, the first one that I did on Vintage Smoky White. So I stuck with a white for that one. But I don't know that I want to do them all on white. Sorry, this is the next project I had in mind. So I could do something like Vintage Sahara, which is a little bit more yellowy than the cream. So it's gonna pull the yellows. Again, terrible lighting, there we go. It's gonna pull the yellows out. So that's cream, and that is Vintage Sahara, which has more yellow in it, and it's more mottled. So that could be really pretty. I also have this. This is perhaps would be the most risky. This is sort of pink. This is Earthen by Picture This Plus Belfast, and mine turned out very like dusty rose in color. 
it's a little bit more brown than perhaps is safe with an Easter project. I don't know if it's too brown. I don't know, but it's sort of pink and I thought maybe I could do a pink. And then I have this beautiful piece of fabric. This is from um, Nancy. This is one of her gorgeous hand dyed. She does beautiful hand dyed linen, by the way. I get her threads every month from Victorian Motto, but she also dyes fabric and her fabric reminds me of lakeside linens in how it's dyed. And she sent me this beautiful piece of 32 count um, Belfast linen in this purple which could be also really pretty. I mean, the pattern is purple. There's lots of purple in the in the chart. This border, this dark color, that's a dark purple. And then there's a lighter purple in there, the house, like a lilac. And I might have to change my color of purple for the house so that doesn't clash, but I could stitch them on this purple. And would that be, sorry, it looks kind of gray up there. It's purple, it's for sure purple, there you go. So that could be really pretty to stitch an Easter piece on this purple linen. So I am struggling. <laughs> I think I think I don't like the earthen. I think the earthen, even though it's pink, I don't. I think it's gonna pull too brown for this project. But I do like the cream, and I do like the vintage Sahara, and I do like this purple linen from Victorian Motto. What would you guys do? <laughs> I'm really struggling. Maybe what I'll do is I'll um, I'll choose my floss colors and then do like a floss toss where I decide which one they look best on. But I think I wanna start this and I'm really struggling with the fabric. So please help me. Last thing that I've thought about starting, and I know it's not summertime yet, but I'm feeling all patriotic. I'm about to finish Liberty's Welcome. I'm thinking about working on my early Americans. Why not start another giant, huge patriotic piece? This is Stitching with the Housewives. This is Priscilla Blaine's Long May She Wave. I love this. It's so cute. The truck and the flags and the chickens and it's just adorable. Um, I would choose my own floss colors most likely because I always do, but I have some charcoal linen as I always do. I always have charcoal linen on hand and that would be a really fun one to start as well. So what do you guys think? Should I start Long May She Wave or should I start Easter House Trio? And if you think I should start the Easter one, which I admit that I'm leaning towards the Easter one, what color fabric? <laughs> I just don't know. Cream, Vintage Sahara, or the purple? I don't know, help me please. That is all I've got for you ladies and gents. We're at 42 minutes, so I'm gonna go ahead and be done. Um, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. I haven't gotten totally back into the swing of answering comments yet. I need to be better. So I will work on answering comments today um, from, la from two weeks ago's video because I haven't checked to see if there are questions that have been asked, so I apologize. I will try to address um, questions in my next video. I'm just still getting back into the swing of being a YouTuber again. I took like a month and a half off, which was nice, but now I'd have to like get back into the groove. I hope you're all well. I hope you're all happy. I hope this was fun for you and maybe inspired you and got your juices flowing on projects you want to work on. And I hope you are all staying safe and happy. And I love you all very much. Thank you for being so supportive of what I do here. And thanks for joining me every time. I will catch you guys in two weeks. Bye.